What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanasia and I'm my name is Shanks. In 2D we are going to cast a replay on a beautiful map Anori and in battle for middle fun. This time on the patch 1.06 it's gonna be like a nostalgic casting. It's been a long time since I was actually making a cast for any patch but the patch 2.22 the last time. But it's good from time to time to have like a, you know, to have a replay from back in the day. And also this way we can also see the, all the improvements we have implemented into the patch 2.22. Anyways, at the bottom left side we have the red gondor player. Gauss. His ally is the, you know, yellow Isengard player Myth. They are against the white Rohan player Necromancer. And his ally at the top right side is the blue Rohan player Pablo. Pablo Escobar. Okay. Double Rohan against Gondor Isengard. Um, obviously, it's a tough matchup for the Double Rohan team. But they have the momentum at the beginning of the game. They have the chance to get, in, you know, a lot of extra peasants upon the field. Keep up the pressure. Get yourself a great lead at the beginning of the game. And snowball the lead into the mid to late game in which you can dominate and don't give the chance for Isengard Gondor to get stronger and stronger because in the very late game it's going to be quite tough for the Gondor Isengard, uh, for the double Rohan team to defeat the Gondor Isengard team. I mean, um, you know, when you play against double good with Isengard, you can also open with a Uruk pit. Um, this way you have a little bit earlier Uruks on the field which you can use for defense. But it's not the end of the world. And also here in the same situation, when you have a Isengard ally against two good factions, in this case Double Rohan, you can also send your Hobbit and also one of your soldiers to defend your ally settlement. It's very important that Isengard actually gets to the mid game without getting hurt too much. And as you can see, the first wave is no problem, because with the war chanted Uruks, you can easily deal with that. But the second wave is gonna be a bit different story. As you can see and tell, now it's going to be tough to defend this because more of peasants are going to come very soon and Gondor might be also in trouble. The last thing you want to do as Gondor in this matchup is you want to go for an attack. You don't want to do this because you have only two soldiers and you won't get any units on the field anytime soon, especially not in this patch because the barracks is kind of weak. And for that reason, if you move forward with your soldiers, the double Rohan team can easily defend this with extra peasants and the two hobbits. But then you have zero defense for your own settlements. And look at that start from Double Rohan boys. They will be able to destroy this mill behind. Isengard was actually able to defend this for, a, for now. Hobbit. Hobbit's fighting. <laughs> the red Hobbit Peregrine Took was able to defeat the blue Hobbit Meredok Brandywag <laughs> from the blue Rohan player Pablo Escobar. In the level 3 Pippin. That's pretty good. I like that. I like that. We have a Lourdes on the field. Lourdes is not a terrible choice. And let me explain why. You know, the only weakness from the Gondor Isengard combination is the lack of damage leadership. So when you combine Isengard with Rohan, Rohan can provide insane amount of utility. With Theodin King, for 1200 only, you can get 50% more damage and armor, which is insanely strong. But Gondor can't do the same. And for that reason, in order to be able to burst down the heroes and also the units later on a bit faster, getting Lourdes on the field early on is actually pretty good. Because this way you can get him to level 5 way sooner, way faster. And, and also what you can do is right click on the cripple and you can find the hidden hobbit and this way clear the settlement. And again, level 5 is a massive power spike for the fighting Urukai for 60% more DPS. Which can stay, stack with the Warchan from... The spellbook of Isengard by another 50% more damage. So 110% more damage, which is pretty, pretty strong. Okay, so we have now a lot of farms into the stable. And this Rohan is actually going for Ilma. Okay, the Horse Lord of Rohan. And unfortunately, unlike in the patch 2.2, the, the heroes, they don't come out mounted. <laughs> another reason why you should be playing to pet, uh, the patch 2.2, which is, you know, in my personal opinion at least, as a very old player of PFME games, uh, the much better version of the game. It's gonna cripple, you know, use the spear. And the goal here is simple, get Irma to level 4. But there comes the Elvin Wood, which is kind of questionable. I don't think you needed Elvin Wood here, because Elvin Wood give you a little bit more, ink, you know, armor, but I think it was not necessary. And it will delay the power points later on, but also mistake from Gondor. Hold on a second. Who's gonna get it? Oh, Gondor actually got it. It's huge. But the money goes to Rohan. Okay, it's not a big deal, I think. But Gondor got the last that it's essential because power points, as you guys know in this game, are game-changing. 
So Pablo is pinging, he's, he's saying, okay, you know what, my good ally, you don't have to build a well, I have a well in my base, so you can save this spot for something else. He has now the stable, he's gonna recruit some Rohirrim Archer, Rohirrim Archer, beside countering the enemy Golden Knights, also gonna counter the heroes later on, as well as the pikemen. So, this strategy is not as strong as going for the combos, obviously, but it's much more mobile. It gives you the chance to hit and run, hit and run, engage, disengage whenever you want to. And mobility, especially in the older versions, is actually essential because infantry is kind of bad. You can't keep up with the speed. Isengard capturing the middle camp, and I'm not a big fan of that, to be honest with you. The reason is, I mean, let me explain. When you open the, uh, when you go for the middle camp, that means you have no Uruk pit level two yet. You have zero pikemen. That means you have zero chance to keep your settlements protected, at least for now. And with no units, almost no units on the field. Giving this many targets to your opening team is not the greatest idea of all time. Okay, I mean, okay, Palanti has been used for movement speed on the Gondor Knights, but the Rohirrim are very close to the ca castle, so they can just, you know, disengage. It's a mistake. And Elma is almost level 4. This Rohan player went actually for 3 Rohirrim. Um, when you go for 5 in this version, you can get the stable to level 2 and buy the shields. To get a bit more durability versus arrows. Also includes, by the way, the arrow damage from Lourdes. Without that, you know, the heroes from Rohan are quite vulnerable against ranged heroes. As you can see, Lourdes can nearly two-shot them if they have not the heavy armor. And Lourdes is level 5 now. That means that's a dangerous spot. But you can see, they will eventually lose map control. Because Gondor can't keep up with the Rohirrim from the Rohan, Blue Rohan, and the Rohirrim Archer from the White Rohan player. That's not possible. And that means Gondor needs some assistance very, very soon. Needs some pikemen, needs Hariman, needs, you know, a siege. We have also Theoden on the field for increased damage leadership and armor. They can also stack... Oh, is this gonna be a, like a... No, okay. I was like, is this gonna be like a sneaky little gate rush? But nope, that's not the case. Riders of Rohan. Oaths you have taken. Now fulfill them all for lord and land. Level 4 Gondor Knight, what is the plan of Gondor? Um, he's kind of poor, he doesn't have that much money, and look at that, he needs shields, you right? He needs shields to withstand the damage of these Rohirrim Arches in long terms. Right now they are not very strong, but the second um, this guy gets level 4, and the second he buys fire arrow on them, he gonna hit like a truck. And not only that, but also Irma will make them level up way faster with the combat experience, and every single level the Rohirrim Arches are gonna get on top of them, will make them much stronger, like, I'm telling you guys, you know, in this game, level advantage is essential. And double land from Gondor in the middle, which can be like a double-edged sword later on, because if you don't know, if Isengard using rain and the Rohan, the enemy Rohan players, step on the land from Gondor, the ally from Isengard, they will regain their leadership bonuses the second they leave the land. So going for land against double Rohan as Gondor, might be a double-edged sword. It might be helpful now, but it might hurt your hurt yourself later on even more. And we have a crossbowman. We need some pikemen in it. He was also three. Like Isengard is kind of selfish. Uh, selfish, you know. <laughs> like he has the middle camp, you know. He has uh, all the money he, he needs uh, with like what six furnaces. That's a lot of extra cash. And then he also steals the mill from his ally. <laughs> This guy is selfish. You better carry this game. Otherwise, I will have to flame you, sir. Oh, beautiful trample into the back line. That's what, that's what I'm talking about, by the way. You see, you give so many more targets. Isengard now has to defend so many sides at the same time. Theoden is level 4. Um, game breaking point, and remember what I was saying at the beginning of the game. This is gonna favor the Gondor Isengard team in long terms, but... The exception to the rule is if one of the Theodians, even maybe both of them, are gonna hit level 4. The Glorious Charge is such an incredibly powerful ability. There comes the Cripple, but you can only cripple one of them. There are two Theodians. There comes the level 4 upgrade in the Pikes. They will be able to take down Theodian, yes sir, but th that's the thing, you know, they can disengage. Now, he lost the Theodian, but it's not a big deal, it's only a level 1 Theodian, right? But Elma got level 4. That's very good. The Theodian is almost level 2. So they have the chance to hit, run, hit, run, hit, run, hit, run all the time. 
Again, gentleman's agreement. No gate rush. I mean, they, they could just go inside. Right now, they have no fire yet. They are actually far away from the fire. Um, which makes them kind of weak. Oh! Oh, smart. Smart from Isengard. Very smart. You are actually kind of beating them to chase lords and running into the porcupine formation pikemen. But Rohan is saying, no, sir. You are not going to beat me this time. But fighting here is still a bad idea for Rohan because he has no well. The well is inside the ally's castle. And during all this time, Gondor is getting map control. Pressure is always nice. It gives you some more time to breathe and reorganize your army. This Isengard will be very, very soon ready to go. And if not that, you can also get always the chance to recruit Saruman. The White Wizard who can also be essential. But again, remember, Rohirrim archers are one of the few units in the game of PFMU1 that can also counter the heroes. It means a few of them with their leadership from Eoma and Theorin can actually burst down even Saruman in like less than 10 seconds and you gotta watch out. Theorin King stands alone. He's revived from the fortress. Um, no money. You can take a look into the current command points and power points of Vic Gauss, the gunner player at the bottom left. has two power points in the bank. Uh, he's far away from getting to the point in which he can eventually recruit Gandalf later on. But here's the power points for it. That's pretty good. Um, we have Myth, his Isengard ally. He has a lot of cash as I was predicting it. I mean, three mills, like middle camp with like six furnaces. And now going for the warp pit too, which is definitely a mystique. Needs to go for the Siege Wargs. Uh, okay, I think it was a mistake for a <laughs> misclick. Now it's gonna go for the Siege Wargs. The war Riders, especially when your ally is Gondor, are meaningless. Like, Gondor has better horses. With the shields, they are much better than Wargs, you know? Eurene is here, level 2. Uh, Aragorn is gonna be the choice of the White Rohan for even more leadership. Then we have Necromancer, the Rohan play at the bottom right. He has nearly two power points collected, and he has the chance to either go for the Anduril Sword to make Aragorn a bit stronger, hold on a second, or for the land. But in the meantime, we have a Beast Rush. And again, Isengard has to now, you see, he has to come with all the army back, because you can't defend yourself only with pikemen anymore. Since there are horse archers with Eoma leadership, they will take care of the pikemen in a few seconds, and it means you can't just simply leave a couple of pikemen in your castle and hope for the best. Because that is not gonna work out for you. And this chase potential, this, you know, chase and run, is gonna give more time to Rohan to get fire arrows. There comes the land from Gondor for the third time. But Rohan can always leave the land and then fight. Aragorn using the Blade Master. The Yeti Sword, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> and you see, even with the shields, they don't stand a chance. Okay. I mean, he's demolishing that. We gotta keep an eye on, on Theodin. That's the most important target. But in the meantime, the Blue Rohan keeps pressuring all the time. That's really good. Yes, Isengard obviously gonna get some power points, but losing those furnaces and denying them from hitting level 2 or level 3 later on is gonna hurt Isengard a lot. Not only now, but also later on. Because the second those furnaces are gonna hit level 3, then your base is much more durable, right? They have like more durability, more tankiness, shoot at enemy units. And you don't have to be worried that much anymore. But until this moment, you should try your best to keep those furnaces protected as long as you can. Which is definitely easier said than done in this situation. Since once again, the mobility advantage, the firepower on the Rohirrim archers with this leadership, and the damage from the normal Rohirrim against structures is a very great, but also at the same time a deadly combination for the Isengard Gondor team. And his ally Pablo has also almost two power points collected. They will very soon get the chance to go for double land. Or once again, this Rohan player could go as he has Aragorn on the field for Anduri to make Aragorn a bit stronger. But again, there is a Lourdes, you know, and Lourdes doesn't care about Aragorn, doesn't care about your theory. And he has the chance to cripple any hero he wants in the place. And then the army of Isengard should be easily able to take care of that. But would you look at that, boys? The Rams are coming, and this Rohan is just trying to fetch power points. He was already able to get the blue sword for Aragorn. And Pablo is pinging, he's saying, Ally, I need your assistance. Rohan calls for it. And will the other Rohan answer? That's the question. The problem here is um, that Isengard player, Myth, did actually go for it for the land, but he's gonna lose the middle camp, you see? During all this time, he lost the middle camp. It means if this attack is not gonna be successful, oh, but that comes the White Wizard. He's gonna use... Oh, he cancelled... What? What did he actually add? Oh, he was using it on Theodian, I think. 
Shudan almost got killed, but it's not able to one-shot him, obviously. He's gonna retreat for now. For multiple statues coming up for additional leadership in the 1.06 version, this has to this would give you 100 percent more damage. And again, Isengard has no freezing rain. So maybe going inside the genes a bit too deep might not be the greatest idea of all time. But it's a bet. Oh, there comes the glorious charge for death and glory. The trampling. Oh, right before the trample, go for it for the Alvin move. That's very good. Lourdes has been taking down a hurt. Ilma has been taking Oh, here in. You see, boys? They were trying to actually kill, uh, you know, Gandalf. And Gandalf almost got one-shotted. In the meantime, though, the, the Rams are actually taking care of the bees. That might be it, but the Rohan army is still alive. If level 10 Rohirrim, Gandalf has actually kind of prisoned himself in a situation which is not great for the White Wizard. Yes, the Rohan castle is almost down, but close is just not close enough. We have a level 6 Elma, the horse of Rohan, Gandalf and his horses. They are trying to finish off the last building, but there is a rebuilding Tetrael and Elma will slay the Mifrandi on his shadow fags. And ladies and gentlemen, the Rohan player has not been defeated yet. And Rain was kind of used a little bit too late. And once again, you can always go on the enemy land, leave the enemy land. There is, this is from Isengard. These three are from Gondor. It means Rohan should not have any problem whatsoever to reclaim the leadership once the rain has been used. Which is ideal situation for Rohan. They have now a very strong army with multiple level 10 Rohirrim Archer Battalions with insane amount of leadership bonuses. And dude, uh, this game isn't over yet, boys. Um, and also during all this fight, he got more power points, 3 power points after the Anduri Sword and the Elven Wood. And his ally has also 3 power points after the Elven Wood. And obviously Isengard, uh, you know, with evil factions, you get power points as you lose units. But again, you know, this creates such a big momentum for the Double Rohan team and they have now the chance to strike back. For death and glory. And they have no leadership though. I mean, Lourdes is just back for leadership. But again, level 10 Rohirrim, that's what we are talking about. You know, they are so tanky. Get over here. Get over here. Did he die? Oh my goodness. That's what I'm talking about, boys. That's what I'm talking about. There was also the Prince of the Mirkwood Elves. Legolas was shooting down at his foe. But the Rohirrim Archer, with this much leadership bonuses, just slaughtered the fighting Urukai. You don't stand a chance. You can not step up anymore. You can't. You simply can't. I mean, you can try, but you will not be able to survive. Well, we have now the Fellowship boys. We are only missing Gimli. But unlike in the past 2.2, the Gimli in the 1.06 version is not very significant. That's why also in the past when I was playing all the versions of the game, we have almost never seen Gimli being recruited. That was the main reason. And now you see him actually way more often. Actually a crazy game. Look, um, the White Rohan gave his ally also another farm because he knows he's struggling many ways. And he was already able to rebuild almost the full base. But again, every single farm is only level one. And oh, look, they will abuse the fact, right? They will abuse the fact that there is like multiple broken parts of the wall. And Gondor will try always to go inside the genes and try to deal as much damage as he potentially can and be distracting, you know, distract the Rohan player, but they don't fall for it. They will just defend this with one Rohirrim, level 10. It means the Gondor Knight doesn't stand a chance. And in the meantime, the Isengard castle will be now non-stop, under siege, under attack. And you cannot easily defend this. Gandalf can't do anything about this situation. Yes, he's back on the menu, but he can't approach this. Trust me on that one, he can't. Oh, that's very, very greedy from the Gondor player. Okay, he's like, maybe I need Rohan to defeat Rohan, <laughs> you know? He was ca calling on the Rohan allies, and he will just focus on the buildings. There comes also Gandalf, and now the Rohan player players have to kind of retreat. Uh, the White Rohan is very strong now, very, very strong now. Look, they can't even withstand the Lightning Sword damage. That's how strong the level 10 Rohirrim are now. But again, Gandalf might be prisoning himself in a situation like that. The thing is, I don't think you can finish off the castle. I don't think that. Let me check um, the money from this dude, Pablo. Pablo has actually no money. Gandalf will be healed and he's gonna get away. 
But this building in the middle, the center building, is so tanky, you know? Oh, you can't, you don't need to use Hulk Strike. Gunner is gonna be able to get away. He's, ex you know, asking his ally. But if, you, <laughs> let me explain. If you can't finish him, you only make him stronger. You understand? Like what I'm trying to say is like, if you cannot finish the player, you will only feed the opening team. The White Rohan keeps killing now the Gunner Knights all the time. They keep, they also kill the Rohirrim ally special summon, and they will get stronger and stronger and stronger. Not only that, but also Aragorn will get some levels. Legolas gonna get some levels. Glorious Charge now is available, uh, almost available, it's halfway up. We have also Boromir, it's a hero we have almost never seen in the 1.06 version. Again, very impactful now in the patch 2.22. Okay, so the thing is, if Boromir and Faramir get somehow levels, like this guy gets level 5 for the leadership and Boromir gets level 4, they, uh, the Isengard army, the combos, are gonna be also very strong. But the positioning in the micro, especially with the heroes, is essential. You wanna stay behind the units with your heroes. You don't want to stay be in f look when they get the chance to shoot you a couple of times. You will lose Lourdes. So you want to make sure that Lourdes is staying far behind. Not too far behind to not give leadership anymore, but not too close to get one-shotted like that. You see, Lourdes is gone, guys. Land, we are, we will gonna, we're gonna see now multiple lands um, on the same spot from all the four players. They are trying to get yourself, get themselves like an advantage. Um, now they are disengaging, which is pretty smart. Aragorn is quite beefy. And Lord's being down, you can't cripple him. They have only Warchant leadership, by the way, the Isengard army. That's not enough to kill the King of Gondor, who is now fighting for Rohan. And look at that. Boromir, the Captain of Gondor, has been literally one-shotted. We get also levels on Legolas now, who's gonna get also stronger and stronger and stronger with every single level. Gandalf can't approach this. And I think he knows that. He knows that he can't make it to this Rohirrim arches alive. You can't. The Are you sure about that? Fields to do that? Paramil trying to show his quality was using warning arrow on one of the Alvin warriors, didn't even kill him. <laughs> Towers are coming up, but I think he's changing his mind. Instead of going for tower, Paramir plus 60 only <laughs> for the bounty, you know, from Boromir's out, uh, from Elma's outlaw leadership, you only get 60 for killing Paramir, the poor guy. I think instead of going for towers, the Rohan player should try to repair this, you know. But again, 2,000 each part, it's 3 parts in total, 1, 2, 3, so 6,000. A new castle will only cost 5,000, you know? Rohirrim summon, they are over committing here, I think. They are just over committing, I don't think it's a good idea. What is what is this guy doing? Boom, son, on your face. But look at the damage output from this highly leveled Rohirrim. The combos, uh, they are on the lane from Gondor, it's a bad spot to fight on, for, first of all. Aragorn just popping off, by the way, knowing the fact that he can't be taken down by this poor and weak without leadership Isengard armies, he will need ages to kill him, but a level 10 Rohirrim Archer fall. The Rohirrim summon did almost zero damage, by the way. Aragorn tanking the fully lightning sword from Gandalf like a boss, and Easterlight might be able to finish him if he has no... Oh yeah, he has heal. Dude, this Aragorn... Guys, I'm telling you, Aragorn is such a beast from the east, you know? Beast from the west in this case. Poor Gandalf, you know, trying his best in his wars with the mightiest abilities we have ever seen from Gandalf. Putting on them, look, they are even destroying the nearby, you know, neutral buildings. They, they burn too. And they are feeding so many power points. After this fiesta, which has happened in the past couple of minutes in front of the Rohan castle, we have nearly five power points collected for the Gondor player. But in what happened? <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I didn't pay attention. Like, apparently, it's like an open gate, you know what I'm saying? Two parts of the wall have been broken. What a fiesta game, guys. Am I right or not? Please let me know what you think about this game in the comment section down below. Five power points, you need one more power point for the Eagles. But again, going for the Eagles, I don't know how smart this is going to be because the Rohirrim Archer Battalions, they will one-tap them, one-shot them. They have no chance. On the other side, Myth, the Isengard player, is 14 power points away from his Balrog special summon. Necromancer, the Rohan player, is 3 power points away from his EOD. And he was, I think, the one who was summoning the ends to break the gate. And now, it's the other way around. Pressure causes the enemy team to play a bit more defensively. And this Rohirrim Arches, they are not only strong against heroes and units. No, they have also the chance to melt through the buildings in 2 seconds. They are, you know, with the ranges from the Gunner faction, these units, the Rohirrim Arches from Rohan, are my most favorite units. Look, lords, lords. Oh, oh, land. 
I mean, he has Glorious Charge, right? But I think he doesn't want to use it. Um, land from Rohan has been... Oh, what is Gandalf doing? Gandalf, 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 Boom! Nice one, dude! But I think he's gonna die for it. Is it worth it? No, it's not. Like, losing Gandalf is never worth it, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, you shouldn't lose Gandalf. But if you can actually kill Aragorn somehow, maybe it's good. But does the Rohan team have... They have heal. They have also Atelas from Aragorn with Elite Blade Master. <laughs> Look, he's just standing there like a boss and tanking all the damage. I think I went for a Devastation for money, which is gonna delay his Spellrock special summon. Heal has been used, and Crippled Duration should be gone very soon. They have even Lord's Leadership, can you imagine that, guys? But it's not enough, because the combos are only level 2, they need some more levels. I think some of them died, I don't know who died. Oh, now they are feeding, they are charging in too many. What is Lord's doing? Lord's has to be careful, Lord's, you can't do this, Lord's. Oh, he killed Crippled Aragorn once again. The what a fiesta a game it actually is, boys. I don't know what is going on. He got crippled twice. Can you imagine that? <laughs> he tank all the damage, was moving away, and Lourdes got his cripple back, and he crippled him again, and he's gonna he's asking for heal, but he has no heal. And Isengard was able to finish him off this time. And after this fight, Isengard was actually able to get a lot of extra power points. He's up to 12 power points in total. He's only 8 power points away from his 20 for the Balrog special summon, which again can be a game it can be a game-ending situation. Because Balrog in this version of the patch can definitely one-shot a full castle of Rohan. There is no chance. You can't... Even Gondor Castle doesn't have a chance. But I think Gondor is making a mistake to overcommit inside the Citadel, uh, inside the Fortress, and castle from Rohan with the Rohirrim special summon all the time. And yeah, he's maybe thinking, okay, you know what? Yeah, they, these are from the summon. I don't mind losing them. But I think you should mind losing them because every time you lose them, you give your opponent more power points. And for that reason, Necromancer, the white Rohan play at the bottom right side, is a little bit less than a half a power point away from getting to the point in which he can summon the off breakers and there is no force <laughs> that can deal with that not the Isengard army not the Gondor army the only way you can deal with that is if your Gandalf kind of somehow magically finds the way to get level 10 for the War of Power because War of Power can destroy EOD but I think he can't even get Gandalf back on the menu because the Sita is gonna be destroyed there is a combo but one single combo Faramir in Boromir, the guardians of the White City. Oh my goodness, man. This Rohan army is so strong, you know? They also leave only one single combo. That's not good. I think Isengard at this point should be just spamming units. And he's going for the first time ever for Saruman. For the entire game. That's not a revival situation. That's actually the first recruit situation. And uh, he has... I mean, Saruman is kind of weak in this version. Uh, the Warm Tongue is pretty good, but I think you will never get the chance to get into the range to destiny. use Warm Tongue. Aragorn is back on the menu, boys. He's also level almost 9. Degolas is level 6. And AOD is available. Now, you gotta be smart about it. When and where to use it. I think you shouldn't use it in the middle unless you kind of force, you know, commit... Ah, it's a mistake. In my opinion, it's overcommitment. I don't think it was necessary. What you need to do is you need to bait them, bait your opponent to get all the units to this location, you know? Give him the give him the idea that you want to go for it. That you want to go and destroy this camp. And give him the time to prepare a defense, you know, with all he can, with heroes and more units. Then you use AOD to kill all of them. Because now he will destroy the middle camp, true, but he only killed like one or two pikemen, uh, one or two combos. Could have done much more than that, to be honest with you. And look at this. He even placed the Yomun archers on top of the castle of his ally, who has still not rebuilt any of these. He has three farms outside level 3, so he's gonna get some... 4. Actually, he has all the farms outside. And he's gonna get some money very soon. And summon is available. And there comes the commitment now on the Gonda castle. Gonda player um, doesn't have the money yet to repair. He's gonna go for Gandalf, but I think he won't get the chance to get him on the field. It's gonna cancel that. Freezing Rain is gonna be used for negating the enemy leadership bonuses, but Faramir, I think, is gonna be the target very soon from this from Aragorn, and Aragorn is gonna two-tap him. Like Aragorn is a, mm, a smasher. Look, <laughs> I'm telling you, like level nine, and I cannot explain what's gonna happen if Aragorn gets level ten, because then you have like two EODs, and they can wipe out heroes and everything. Did he just lose Saruman here? By the way, I didn't pay attention. No, Saruman is somewhere. Saruman is coming, they are kinda of trying to surround this army of Rohan, and he's kinda of overcommitting now for the for the Citadel. Um close the gate, I think you should close the gate here, right? And 
look, if he would have closed the gate, I think it would be such a great situation. Because then they would be forced to disengage from this location only. And they couldn't get away from this location, right? And now, all of them might be able to survive. Especially the mounted heroes. Okay. Oh, he missed the fireball damage, you see? Fireball hit connected, but he, could, he couldn't deal damage to Elma. Elma was able to get away. <laughs> Only Legolas will be crippled. <laughs> Saruman in medium range, you know, with the staff. Take this, take this, elf. And, you know, losing the Citadel is gonna delay your Gandalf even more. The revive time at this point of the game is quite long. And, yeah. Isengard recaptured the middle camp, by the way. And, you know... That, that's the point in which you should have the ring alarm sound and you are playing on the rising guard because every single minute you waste now is gonna get you one step closer to the defeat screen because if you don't do anything the Rohan player can just chill out and wait for the cooldown of the EOD and you see it's already more than halfway up so with the next EOD you will get definitely get the chance to you know finish off the game and finish or finish off the gonna player at least so, Isengard has to make a move, and has to try his best to get the 3 power points he needs, and requires to get to Balrog very soon, otherwise this is a time bomb, and the game is gonna be over, no matter what you are gonna do. He's reviving all the heroes, Boromir and Faramir, I think they, they've been revived <laughs> revive now for multiple times, but they never got the chance to level up, you know, because that's not a patch to point to do. Aragorn got crippled, almost level 10, though. that's so scary, man. This is so scary. This Rohan player is kind of behind still. I mean, you know, it's always like that. The Rohan player who, who goes for the Rohir matches will always have more power points. Always. There, there is not even a contest, you know? War chant, length, double length, cover from other Rohan. Aragorn is tanking and will be taken down. Ooh, that's gonna bring us closer to the Balrog special summon. The Cloud Break is gonna be the choice now from the Rohan player Pablo into the Ents special summon from his ally Necromancer. But Ents, they can't go to war because the fire operated combos, they're gonna one shot. The good thing about the Ents summon, if you don't know, is you can summon them on top of the enemy units. And the second they summon, you can move with them. And the good thing about the Ents, besides that, is that you, when you trample them, you can one shot everything, even uh, if they have like full leadership. The combos, they don't get the chance to fight. Saruman has been taken down, but look at that. Now we have the Balrog summon available for Myth, the Isengard player. He shouldn't waste any time. And finish off this dude. That's the dangerous dude. This guy is far away from his AOD, right? He should be the one who you go for. Very important. The middle camp is going to be definitely taken down. Myth is actually pinging and saying, can you repair this or something? I don't know what, what the communication here is. <laughs> Maybe they can't out. Oh, okay, they can get out, definitely. It's almost level 10 combo. Lourdes is still alive, but Saruman has been taken down. I'm, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting to hear the sound of the of the deep, you know? The, the, the sound of Moria. This is no Raul of Mindless Oh, because these are... This is Balrog. Uh, but the problem... Look, that's what I'm talking about. Every single second they wasted, it's gonna hurt them even more. Because now, what Necromancer can do... Okay, he's not gonna go for it. He's gonna go for the, for the EOD offensively. Looks like they wanna finish off this Gondor player. But very smart move from Gondor. Dude, I like that. I really do like that. Very smart, you see? Now, the entrance is closed. You shall not pass. Exactly. Boromir has been shot in the back. And I'm still waiting for the sound. Oh, there comes the Balrog, finally. Does he have the chance? I mean, again... And you micro well, and not too well, just well, you know, you can definitely finish off the castle. If you know that you can't do it whatsoever, what you can do is you can break the gate with Balrog. If you are not confident that you can finish it off. Because AOD summon was kind of blown away for like killing one building or two buildings, which is not off. ideal. Um, the breath fire wasn't the best, to be honest with you. Look, I will give you a hint, okay? So, but you want to summon the Balrog always here on this location. But even, you know, regardless of what you summon him, you want to fly here to this location, boys, okay? And you want to use your Ignite while you're in the mid-air to destroy this building in the middle first. When you, when you destroy anything else, you can just repair, rebuy it, right? You want to destroy this so he can't rebuild anything. And you move on to this location here, and you breath fire, and you are aiming to destroy this, this, and this at the same time. 
right? So you what you did? You destroyed this, this three. Then you move out to take this, out to take this, out to take this, and you go here again and you breath fire for a second time to destroy these two buildings. <laughs> I know too many, too many informations, but the Badrock summon from Myth was legit, no offense here, but horrible. Like, you, anything would have been better, and I think just focusing down the, the gate would have been a better choice. Or, if you are not confident that you can finish it, then you can even try to use it on the, on, on the enemy army, you know? On this army, for example. The thing is, um, Eoma could make so much bank for Necromancer, the White Rohan player. He killed so many units and heroes, and outlook leadership makes you grow rich in long terms. And he's level 10 now, by the way. Theodian is also eventually level almost 10, yeah? They go last level 7. They're gonna go now for the Isengard player. The Gondor is kinda out of the game, though. Uh, he never got the chance to revive his Scanner. He lost this over and over again, you know? But at least he's kinda repairing this. But, like, zero farms outside, right? Zero farms outside. Only, what, Blacksmith inside the, ba inside the base? He's kinda broke. Go hit him, summon. You see, like these kind of things. Look, let me take a look into the power points of Gondor. Yeah, these kind of things are gonna slow you down. Faramir has been taken down. I think you need to understand at this point of the game, going for Faramir or Boromir is kind of meaningless, right? Like, what is the <laughs> what is the definition of insanity when you try the same thing over and over again and expect different results? And that's exactly what this player is doing. No offense, but he's trying to revive. Parami and Boromi over and over again, but yet again, when they come on the field, they die one second later. So it's not a great call to do this. It's a waste of money. In money, you are not rich to do that. What you could do instead is go for Siege Forks, go for Trebuchet, you know, or for Tower Guards. Do something else which you haven't tried yet. Because, obviously, what you have tried so far isn't working. You understand? Like, basic, strategical... <laughs> you know, educational content here for you guys. If you are in a, in a loop situation, then you need to understand that you gotta do something else, right? And you need to try to do something else, but then what you have done all game long, because what you have done clearly doesn't seem to work. Um. Okay, so, again, buying the middle camp is one of these things, you know? <laughs> just don't do this. Don't buy the middle camp. Because you just lose money. Like, building this middle camp is gonna cost you 5,000 resources. And yeah, I think that is money. But it's still a waste of money. What you could do instead is go for the second Uruk pit. Make two Uruk pits. Why only one? You can easily produce way faster units this way. Because what, what, what will happen is you will lose units. But you should try to make perfect usage of your money advantage. Like, economical advantage. So you have more money than the opening team. You know that you have destroyed the majority of the ba of the base. So you should try to lose two units for one. You need to exchange even two for one or three for one. But you have sustained the eco and they don't, right? And again, Gondor is kind of very poor. And yet again, he will revive Faramir, who is level three. And remember, Faramir, when you recruit him at the first place, he will be level three from the beginning. So he has done nothing, this spear throw, to one-shot the Ballista. 10 power points, the Balrog summon is gonna be available, the EOD summon is available. EOD will be summoned kinda defensively around this location. Unfortunately, the Isengard player wasn't able to finish off this one. The end summon will be, uh, will be summoned offensively, however, to break once again through the walls of the Gunner player. Very soon they will go inside the jeans. On the other side, the Isengard camp in the middle is gonna be taken down. <laughs> what a fiesta game. But I feel like I'm in a loop, loop situation, you know? The Baldrog summon. Let's see if this is gonna be the one which can finally finish off the game. There is... Look. Okay, that's good. That's good. It's okay. Nah, nah. Uh, I don't like this at all. Uh, the positioning is very bad. Like, you can't even breath fire, but you wanna breath fire. Like... It's forgiving, guys, you know? It's not like you need to not have the perfect angle to actually do this, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty forgiving. But, you know what? Rohan can... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, the Rohan player here can just buy the middle camp, and even if he loses the castle, he won't be defeated. Oh my goodness, man. Legolas was actually shooting down Gandalf from a long distance. Again, level 8 Legolas. With crazy amount of DPS... Even Gandalf, or not even Aragorn, can withstand this for a long duration. Oh, look at this. Like, he's now at this point making Uruks, not, not even combining them. He will steal the Rohirrim, that's pretty good. 
and Saruman is to survive. Just fo you want to focus down on the buildings. He knows they are after Saruman and he's going to run into the arms of Legolas. Legolas is going to shoot him down like Gimli wanted from him in the films. Yeah, the base has been taken down, but let me take a look into the money right now. Uh, so, Pablo, I mean, okay, Pablo is far away from getting anywhere close to the point in which he can eventually rebuy this. But to be honest, to be completely fair with you, Pablo has not been a threat since almost the beginning of the game. He's still far away from getting anywhere close to the EOD. He has no money, almost no units, not even Aragorn. I mean, he has Aragorn, okay? Um, my bad, he has Aragorn somewhere. That's Aragorn actually only level 5, and that's all he got, right? That's all he got. Not even Legolas, no Theodin level 4, no Ilma. And he's asking for the money for the money. And what I'm trying to say is like, you should try to focus of focus this guy down, you know? Not this guy. Because this when you crush Necromancer and defeat the White Rohan, then you won the game. In the meantime, he's gonna go for I heard Ganov screaming 450 for killing the white wizard. I think he went for a greedy, uh, you know, the land with a plus combination, which is like a suicide squad mission, you understand? Like, you can't approach this. Forget about the Rohirrim matches, but there is a Legolas, who is level 9, shooting you like 5 arrows a second on your face. In Aragorn, the second you stand still, he will hit you like a truck. Like, what, what, can, what, can, range, what can elves do? They can do nothing. Aragorn is so tanky, dude. Like, I mean, it's unbelievable, you know? It's unbelievable. The farm is ready. Behold, an Isengard bought this. Really? But how are you planning to, to hold it? And that's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. And oh my goodness. Oh, 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 the arrow wally. <laughs> Aragorn got crippled, but he's like, who cares? I'm gonna stand here and tank all your arrows all day long. Isengard has it's kinda poor now, right? It's kinda poor. I mean he could go for the yeah, he has all, already all the power points Make unlocked. Sure uh yeah, Necromancer has 24 power points, but he can't use them. He has also all the power points unlocked. Pablo is eight power points away from the EOD, and Gondor is like three and a half power points from if Gondor can get AOD, it's a different story, but I don't think he can get to AOD anytime soon because he has only 40 available command points on the field. With power points exclusively and not without Eagles, you can't get it. With Eagles, once the Rohirrim matches are dead, you could use the Eagles to kill heroes like Legolas, Theodin, Elma, and Aragorn, then you could get a lot of power points collected, but without Eagles, it's definitely not possible. Okay. Um. Oh. Fight for me, and I will hold your oaths fulfilled. What? See you. I can't believe it, dude. Like, I mean, so many major rookie mistakes. And again, those players are no rookies. Again, I mean, I can also make mistakes. But I think, you know, these mistakes, especially from, for example, the Gunner player. Like, why was so obsessed with Faramir? But if you are that obsessed with Faramir, go for him way earlier. No, no units anymore. Make maybe rangers like again do something trebuchet Isengard, not a second Uruk pit all game long. A poor, you know, Balrog micro to not be able to finish off the game. He could, he has the chance here, by the way, to finish off the game. Like, this was legit, legit, legitimate a chance to win the game right on the spot, you know. And you defeat this, he didn't have the middle camp, he would have won the game. EOD will be special summoning the base. Rohan, Isengard will summon the Balrog now, the kind of defensively. At least kill the heroes. Okay, uh, more comment on this one. We have the new farm. <laughs> the fellowship is still alive. Uh, he's gonna go for the middle camp. He he knows that destroying this is gonna destroy the player. But can destroy can this be enough to win the game? I doubt that, because I don't think Pablo. No offense, but I don't think Pablo is the problem here. For the Gondor Isengard team. It's definitely the person with the Rohirrim archers. With Aragorn level 10. With Legolas level 10. With EOD being summoned for the third or fourth time throughout the game. And the main castle from Isengard will fall. Yes, here's the second castle. It's kind of kind of crazy. The event for the swap and stuff. 
uh, Gandalf is like a really long revive time. When he's level 9 or level 10, it needs like ages for you to get him back. Almost as long as the, you know, recruit time or the reload time of the Balrog or EOD. The castle has been fully destroyed and a Necromancer has not the money to buy it back, but nor does any other player. Like, Necromancer is still the richest player, even though he gave up all the farms to his ally. Who's still alive, by the way. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Uh, and summon might be available very soon. Yes, sir. So Ent can definitely, you know, like a deja vu situation to break the same parts of the world once again and go inside once again. EOD from Aragon is reloading incredibly fast in this game, in the 1.06 version, which was kind of broken in my opinion. The speed throw to kill off the trebuchet. And can Gandalf join the battlefield? That's the big question. And if yes, what can he do? He's only level 9. I hear the ends. Aragorn, the one-man army, and there are two of them, you know, for, one for each Rohan player. The Hawks try to kill off the crossbowmen from the wall, because they are not supposed to be defenders, they are the attackers. The siege has begun the last march of the ends. Come, my friends. The ends are going to war. It is likely that we take revenge on Gondor for their non-helping action in Westfold. One part, kick down. Second part, broken but there is always hope for the vegans <laughs> if this guy gets level 10 even then it doesn't matter at all like i'm telling you god aragon can two shot him like literally if he doesn't pay attention aragon gets the chance to hit him twice with the bleed mask and under his sword it's over for him look 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 please the damage he knows that EOD will be special from from, uh, from aragon the ends are burning but the thing is, look Legolas, dude, from long distance, he knows he can he needs to leave this area, you know? Yeah, go get out. Oh, that hurt, the chunks. He's almost level 10, dude. Does he have heal? Yes. Let me check if he has heal. Oh. Let me check. Um, no, he doesn't have heal yet. Now he just kind of can not do anything but watch how the beast is falling apart. Still no EOD. Isengard captured this once again. Now, Isengard has double castle. Boom. Okay. Now, oh, but he's losing the beast. Oh, oh, not bad. EOD is available for Gondor. No way. Hold on a second. Can Aragorn finish? Aragorn can kill EOD, by the way. That is the last remaining building in the base of Gondor. If he can defend this somehow, he is still in the game. Oh no! Aragorn has been taken down and Gandalf is still alive. Hold on a second. But Necromancer is almost his AOD once again. Very soon, in about like 30 seconds. Oh, they want to finish off the bees. They want to finish off the bees, the blacksmith, and the rebuilding. What is this game fiesta, dude? Crazy game, boys. In double castle for Isengard. The Rohan player is stuck to the one camp in the middle. That's all he got. He also lost Aragorn, by the way. This guy lost Aragorn. Also long revive time. But way less than Gandalf. And again, those major back, uh, you know, balance issues got actually fixed in the patch 2.22. Uh, also with, like, revive time information, like, so much more. You can download the patch 2.22 from the link in the description down below. If you haven't already, trust me on that one, guys. It's just, you know, much better. <laughs> trust me. You know, it's like an evolution. This game didn't have any balance changes. Hold on a second. I heard Balrog. And EOD. The problem... Oh, and Rohan coming to finish off the Gondor. Gondor has no money, right? Let me check if he has money or not. And nope. <laughs> he is poor. At this point of the game, leave the game. If you leave the game before you get defeated, you give your money, which is not there, but you can give also money, your Gandalf to your ally. Gondor is gonna be definitely defeated. He's like, poor. Use Cloudbreak or something. Like, you gotta do something. Just use it, you know? Get it on cooldown. It's gonna summon the... Oh my goodness. Can Rohan buy this piece? Um, no. Rohan can't buy this piece, but Gondor has been defeated first. And the other Rohan will be defeated next. Interesting game, dude. I've never seen something like this. Look, the Gondor... And the enemy Rohan got almost defeated at the very same time. And now we have a very tricky situation. Yes, it looks great for Isengard. But would you look at the situation? I mean, you know, 
uh, Rohan has all the farms outside, first of all. And he has a level 10 Aragorn. Like, this dude, all alone, is like a one-man army. How are you planning to kill him? Money can't kill him. Yes, you have multiple bases, but you have zero units on the field. That's the problem. You have no Lourdes, no Saruman, nothing that can stop the three hunters, or the two hunters in this case. I mean, these two pleb combos, they don't stand a chance. Like, he's gonna now run around and buy all the camps, all the castles, but again, gives more targets to the Rohan player, and he has enough money. If Ioma being around, having the auto leadership, he will definitely not have any money problems whatsoever. The first castle is gonna be indeed taken down at the same time, simultaneously, the middle camp too. <laughs> Poor Gimli. Like, I think Eowyn and Gimli are these two heroes we have not seen all game long. <laughs> not from the one, and also not from the other Rohan player. But this is actually a pretty crazy game, guys. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this game. And I think casting all the replays from a couple of years ago, you know, the nostalgia, is still nice. And also, for my defense, I haven't played Beef Me online since a while. I'm definitely planning to get back into it, but in summertime, it's kind of rough, as you guys know. It's pretty hot outside. And you don't want to spend too much time inside. Myth will be leaving this game. And that's it, boys. That's it. GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. And subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.